everyone. Welcome to Mission to Inspire. My name is Shola and I've got our wonderful guest here with me today. His name is Benjamin Brown. Hi, Benjamin. Good morning to you, or should we say good afternoon where you're at? <laughs> where I am at this afternoon. Yes. <laughs> Benjamin, can I say he's in Florida and I'm in the UK. So we've got how many hours? Um, apart, I think about seven. Yes, especially if you're on a flight with a boring movie and your phone is dead. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to answer that question. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, Benjamin, I would uh, leave it to you to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit more about you. Well, I hope to cover in this interview tips that normal people and business people can learn to okay. use today in sales. Mm -hmm. I work 360 Sales is the name of my company. The ramifications around everything with that company is everything that it has to do with sales and also making money. People yeah. can learn the quick skills or mm -hmm. some of the skills to actually ascertain in their language and they can generate more money by learning how to learn the skill of actually selling. So yeah. I've been in sales for over 20 years, mm -hmm. and I've done every position known out there um, when it comes to sales pretty much, except for in space. I haven't sold in space yet. I'm waiting for that one. I went to Kennedy <laughs> Space Center last weekend, so I'm thinking about space. So I might be the first salesman well, you astronaut. will actually be the first salesman in space astronaut yes <laughs> isn't that awesome that would be <laughs> i would close every deal video conferencing floating around <laughs> isn't that awesome all right so yeah I, I enjoy not only doing it i enjoy teaching it and so one of the things i offer different is that I not only can do it, I can teach it. And to teach it is a gift to pass on that skill to people because it is a physical skill. I mean, basically, you have to do a lot of role playing to get it down because 80% of sales mm -hmm. is confidence, right? Yeah. And so building people confidence is the mentorship I provide to get people to understand that there's rejection involved. And if you can get over that rejection in your performance as well, yeah. Um, you can make some significant strides either in your business or you can take it on as a full-time occupation if you like. Yeah, yeah, that's um, very true. We will actually be covering a lot more in the interview because I'll be asking you questions around, around that. Um, my first question actually is, what inspired you to instill your 20 years of sales experience into rapid success? sales process because you've got 20 years sales experience haven't you yes mm. so why did you instill that experience into the rapid success sales process because i know that is your that's your baby well it's based on style it's like karate if you take all the different martial arts you should be able to defend yourself Mm -hmm. But you need to know at least one art very good before you go on to others, right? right. Um, same thing with sales, as long as it works and you're taught properly. Mm -hmm. So what I did is took what my experience over the years from the different sales process that yeah. I've used and comprised something a little simple for people to digest, but not simple, but also effective yeah. um, and get, builds the confidence for people to close more sales. Right, right, right. Okay. So then how do you approach sales coaching? How do you approach it? How do you approach sales coaching? I mean, from, from when I was going through your bio, your mm -hmm. sales approach actually differs from the traditional sales approach. How, how, do, you, how do you approach it? And how, how, how is it different? What's the difference between them? Well, I'll ask you a question. Who is most important, the salesperson or the customer? The customer, to me, I think. There is the difference. I have the solution to something that you might need, people need, or want. People buy what they want, yes. right? 
So I have to qualify to see if you want it bad enough mm -hmm. that I can help you. And sometimes you don't know what that actually is, why you want it. And if I can discover why you want it, it can help me provide you with the reason to actually move forward and purchase it. Right. But sales is not, I digress because sales is not all about money, right? right. So yeah. one of the things I ask my hosts all the time, what is the purpose of a sale? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Well, to me, the purpose of a sale is to, well, is to sell something. That's the main reason. And to create awareness of a particular product or service. You have children. I do. I've got two. When they were little and they asked you to pick me up, 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 pick me up. Yeah. Oh, they still do it. My little ones still do that. That's a sale. That's a close. They want you to do something. So mm -hmm. the purpose of a sale is to get someone to move. Ah. So instead of talking at you like, hey, hey, mom, I think I want you to pick me up. They're mm -hmm. going, no, pick me up, pick me up. And if I say it enough times, something's going to happen. You're going to have to do something. You can't just look at me. You either got to deny me, right, an objection. Or you're going to have to pick me up, which is a close. Right. Children okay. are one of the best salespeople in the world. We've been born to sell. We just lose it over time. Make sense? Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> From that perspective. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sales is simple, but it's not easy. So I get people to understand the simpleness of it and then learn to do the work afterward, which is the not easy part. But if you can get through that, you could be a great salesperson. Right. Okay. I, I suppose sales is actually had enough anyway. As it is that I have to sell, but then I don't like selling. But I have to do it anyway. So I have to learn the techniques to be able to do it and do it successfully. And I guess that's what you teach. Absolutely. People are aware. I don't like sales. You're in business? Yes. You're in sales. You're a parent? Yes. <laughs> You're in sales. You're a wife or a husband? You're in sales. Right. So just because you don't like it makes it harder to do. So if you understand what it's all about, it makes your life a little bit easier in your personal and also in your business life. That's true. That's true. Can you walk us through a few key steps of your rapid success sales process and, 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 and its significance? So there's 10 steps in every sale, but not every product or service needs 10 steps. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So say, for example, my book has 10 steps. It's 10 steps in every sale. But say, for example, the gym business. When you wow. walk into a gym... There's normally five steps in the gym's sales. Mm -hmm. Need, use, affordability, spouse, guest pass. Yeah. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. you go through one step at a time. Okay. So it's mm -hmm. the same thing as when I work with individuals, they always ask me, I don't know if you can help me because we do this. And right. I go, I really don't care what you sell. Mm -hmm. Don't. It's about the process. Right. You can always put a product or service inside the process, which makes it simpler. <laughs> Learn the process, not about the product. About the product. Okay. So what that means is that I can take someone and we could sell cell phones mm -hmm. on Friday. And on Monday, we could sell calculators and don't even skip a beat because our confidence is based on the process, not the product. You know All we're doing is replacing it with the item or, or a service. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It kind of um, makes me wonder how some people can sell different products without, and they will still close a sale. They will still make a sale. Whereas some people are just fixed on a particular service and products. And they can't shift to another. That's because they don't have an overall sales process that works that way. And they've been pigeonholed. Mm -hmm. It's like an actor that does the same role over and over again and 
and won't diversify. They won't diversify with that person to a different type of role. It's the same thing. And you can get like that and, and it hurts. Ah, that's very true. What are the common pitfalls um, that you see in small businesses, uh, especially what they encounter in their sales strategies? What, what are the pitfalls, the common ones that you see? They're looking for what's called low-hanging fruit. Low-hanging fruit, okay. What's they don't, they, they can't sell, so they'll put a lot of money into marketing. Okay. The shiny objects that you buy that you see come around for entrepreneurs all the time to get leads. Right. right? Yeah. Okay. Because the, you don't want to put the work in to actually deal with the customer. So you sell them at arm's length. So you would like people like every entrepreneur lately would like somebody just go to their webpage, click and put in their credit card and buy. <laughs> but it doesn't work. It like that you can that. yeah yeah you you have seen other people do it you think you could do it too and they sell you why you should buy their deal to do it and most of the time it doesn't turn out right yes we've all been victims of that we all yeah. have right. shiny objects that's true that's true especially when we want to run away from from selling it's true yes <laughs> so so everybody has a accounting process. Yeah. You have a marketing process, but most mm -hmm. people don't have a sales process. So even though they will get leads, yeah. they can't close them. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. Why? Wow. This is interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. So a lot of a lot of um, companies, organizations, especially the small to medium, they have this product. The product is really good, but then they market it like you say, can't close. The, they can't close close the lead. Wow, that's really true. Wow. So what do so 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 they, what happens in that in that sense when you don't close? Mm -hmm. Most salespeople or whoever's doing selling will start to point fingers okay. because they they won't point it at themselves. Their okay. skill is not there. They're pointed at the lead. They'll say they're not qualified. This lead mm -hmm. wasn't good enough. It wasn't easy enough to close. So they'll blame their performance on something else besides themselves. So most of the people that call me will start mm -hmm. taking the fingers and pointing at themselves. And it's like, it's like um, a drug addict. I need help. And some people don't want to get asked for the help. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so, so interesting. It's so interesting. I mean, I can see a little bit of myself in there. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Now, if I could snap my finger right now and make you the best, one of the best selling people in the United, in the United Kingdom... What would that change? Everything would probably would change, change everything right? because I mean, my business is all around selling, to be honest. Yes. Mm. Mm. And sales, when you learn how to do it properly, it's actually fun. It's a different language. You're talking to people in a different language and you have to learn that language. Okay. Some people have it naturally. You see yeah. those people that have mm -hmm. people's skills and they learn naturally. But yeah. most of the time, you need to have it in order to grow and teach it to someone else. You have to understand the process. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. So, so interesting. You are a father of two. <laughs> How do you balance your professional commitments with family life uh, and, and your, your business? I run three businesses. Wow. Okay. So, so I have a full-time limo business, a book business and the coaching business. And so I tell people use the technology that you have, but do not let it overcome you. One of the beautiful things I use is like a calendar program. So it being able to set your schedules and block out your time and all of this is is being like number one step from the book, being prepared. 
So being prepared is scheduling your time, mm -hmm. you know, because I've been one of those who worked too much or did this too much or so on and so forth. So I was able to understand I have the programs where people can reach out to me. They can, you know, everything is based on my calendar, like a real person now. Like, mm -hmm. wow. Like I knew exactly when to be on the phone with you. Right. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that awesome? <laughs> That's didn't have to call you, didn't have to ask you. It automatically mm -hmm. just went in there and we both showed up yes. like, you know, that type of deal. So, uh, you know, we came from old school where, you know, that's nice in the future. AI is going to handle all that way. You don't even know where you're going. You're just yeah. being run by something that talks to you all the time, which is going to be sad. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, it's, it is what it is. But, yeah, using technology. And then also realizing in most times yeah. an hour meeting can be accomplished in 15 minutes if you can effectively do it. There's no reason to have an hour meeting. No, no, not at no. all. Yeah, no. Mm. No. That is very true. If people want to reach you, how can they reach you? How can they contact you? Well, I make it very simple. I mean, I work with limited amount of students because it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. So I open and close those besides some of the other programs that I provide. But I make it very simple for people and previous customers to reach out to me. I have the URL meetwithbenjamin.com. Right. And it's a scheduling program as well, just like that. And you can get into my schedule mm -hmm. to find out if you qualify. I qualify my people I work with. Because okay. they, first of all, have to like or love the product. If they right. don't like it, love it, leave it, because mm -hmm. it shows in the way you present it to other people. People will know if you don't like what you're selling. And they won't buy as much, because if, if you don't believe in it, why should I? Why should I? That's very the, true. That's very true. The skepticism starts to grow and creates mm -hmm. objections and so yeah. on and so forth. So being able to do that and utilize that. So I, I meet with Benjamin.com. Go there, click on that. There's a 30 minute session, basically yeah. finding out, you know, a little bit about you, what your problem is, because I'm a problem solver. And mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, it, that's basically what you do. You're solving problems. That's true. That's true. That is true. One more question before we go. Um, yes. If you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of sales advice, what will it be and why? Oh, it would just, it would just be um, stick more with the process and the process will set you free. If you ever have any doubt on your sales, it's yes. mainly because of yourself, not the process. Right. And so just believe in that. Mm -hmm. And then put, make sure you put your goals adequately because that's your motivation. Mm -hmm. And in sales, it's, it's a workout. If you're not feeling it, it's not going to work. So you have to motivate yourself different ways because this, this, the phone that you pick up sometime will weigh 5,000 pounds. Yeah. I don't feel like calling this person going through the, but that's how you make your money. So you have to understand how to motivate yourself, self-motivated because you really can't. I've learned and in, in as far as a, a coach, yeah, um, you really can't motivate someone. You can't. Really? No. no, that's a false positive. You can't. You can't. If they don't want to do it, they they won't do it. You have to find. You have to find people that will motivate themselves. Now, Michael Jordan didn't need a, a a psychologist or anything. Kobe Bryant. These guys are diehard. They had it within them. There was something that pissed them off. There was something that motivated themselves. So yeah. when I work with people, I try to find out what motiv what, what helps them motivate themselves. Because yeah. I can't do it for I can't scream. I was in the Marine Corps. That was a different type of motivation. You got screamed at. You do that now, you go to jail. So, you know, basically you need somebody to find what is it your children? Are you trying to get somewhere? Are you trying to make enough money to pay off your bills? Are you trying to live a better life? Are you trying to inspire people? Yeah. You know, what is it that you're looking at with entrepreneurship mm. normally doesn't have an end. Either you sell the company, you get bought out or you quit, sure. right? What are those goals that you basically want to do? And what does it look like? Paint the picture and then put the steps in place. Motivate that you do the steps and you'll get there. But most people won't do that because they don't have the motivation. 
don't have the motivation. Oh my goodness. They don't have the motivation. Wow. Yeah. You should like or love the product that you provide. You should be standing over the overpass like every day, like buy my product. Like this, is, this is why scammers make more money than honest people is because they believe in what they're doing. They want the money so bad. They'll tell you anything and they're very excited when they do it. Right. And then you get somebody who's selling something that can really help somebody, but their demeanor is very low and they can't sell it. So mm -hmm. it's all based upon your persona, right? How, what gets your persona going, right? You, you're, you're making people move. You have to get them to move. You can't just talk at them. Will you buy my product? Like, mm -hmm. no. Would you please buy my product? Like, no, you, you know. <laughs> what makes that product special? Why do I have Please, to please, I need to make rent. No, <laughs> people are not going to do that. They're not going to feel sorry for you. True, that's true. Right. That's very true. Oh my God, that is very true. So please, 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 please. So now you sound like a child. Please, 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 please. <laughs> oh my God. Is that your piece of advice to people watching you then who want to sell but can't sell? Well, you first of all, like it or love it. You mm -hmm. cannot assume anything in a sale. The first rule in sales is never assume anything. It's all rule out by questions. Right. So you have to have enough questions to, to make sure that you're helping the person and most people don't ask. They want to just present. Let me tell you about my product. Ooh, let me tell you about my product. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, it's like, no, it's just, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's based on can you help them? What what do they what problem do they have? How bad is it? And do they want to get it solved? Mm -hmm. Then once they want to get it solved, then you ask them, I might have something that might work. But if we do, will you not waste my time if I tell you what it is? Mm -hmm. Can you afford? It? You know, you could put a price in there. It's going to cost you four thousand dollars minimum. For the solution that I provide, is that affordable for you? Mm -hmm. So most people assume nothing and get toward the end and say, you want to buy it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then people go, no. And you go, what? No? Please, 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 please buy it? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Yes. Then your, 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 your confidence goes down because yes. you don't know what you did wrong. Then you go into the next call. You yeah. do the same thing. That oh, happens three yeah. times. You're crushed. You're like, this is not working out. I hate sales. This is not work. And it's all because of you. It's not them. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but sometimes it's just that you need the, you need the right energy to sell. That's the thing. No, you don't. You need the right process because you take all the emotions out of the process. You do your job. Take the, it's your job. Right. You don't want to do your job. Take all the emotions out of the... <laughs> you don't want to do your job. No. Mm. You want to pay your bills. True. You got to do your job. You do your job. That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that. I know we that you start entrepreneurship because we're bored. Uh -huh. We start entrepreneurship to do something to help people make money. So it's not because I'm doing this because I don't have to. You do it because you want to. If not, you can go work for somebody and they'll they'll you don't have to be entrepreneurship no more. You just go get a check, which most people are happy with doing. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's why when some people say, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur, and I look at them, I go, do you really, do you really know what it is to go, like, work 90 hours and make no money because you're building your business? You know, do you really understand what that's about? Because you you see it all the time, all these happy stories. Have you understood the, the sad stories, the devastating stories that people tell you? Most of the successful millionaire and billionaires you ask them, tell me the bad stories. They got a list this long. The reason that they're there is they over they overcame the bad. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. That's true. That yeah. true. Mm. It's that's about true. failure. It's about that's what I wanted to say. That a lot of these millionaires and billionaires failed, they failed and failed before yeah. they were successful. We don't get to hear about the, their failure most of the time. 
Uh, we no, hit- it doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound good. It doesn't get likes. <laughs> but you can't pay your bills with your likes, can you? No, not at Ooh. all. No. <laughs> no, not at all. No. Oh my God. Thank you so I much. I tried that. I went down to the bank and I showed them my likes and I said, Will this cover it? And they said, No. no of course not. It would it wouldn't. I said I got 110 likes on that though. <laughs> Of course not, be with us, be with us, not at all. Thank you so much for coming on our show today. <laughs> You're very welcome. I know you've um, uttered some books. Are uh, any of the books around sales? Yeah, my book is on Amazon. It's Master the Art of Closing the Sale by Benjamin Brown. Okay. It's not that big, it's thin because I keep it simple, right? And based on that, you have a process where you can actually understand the steps of what you need to do. You need to have a guide. The main thing in sales is three things that you got to do at the same time. Number one, you have to know exactly where you're going in your conversation. Right. Number two is that you have to listen. Mm -hmm. And number three, you have to be confident. And you have to do all three at the same time. And that's a skill that you need to actually become a good, successful salesperson. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. So those three skills, can they role play it? As often as they want to before the master, master that, master those skills. So um, I think that brings us to the end of today's interview. Thank you so much for coming on our show. I personally really enjoyed it and um, I'm going to learn <laughs> from you. Do you actually have, do you have a LinkedIn account? I do. I've got LinkedIn. Yes. Find me on LinkedIn. Okay. And then the only thing I say for people, give me a recommendation on what you learn. Uh-huh. And then if you need anything, just let me know. I'm here for you. Great. Great. Thank you. I will You're be very a- welcome. Then I'll look for you on LinkedIn. I'll, I'll come up to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming on our show today. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Subscribe if you haven't done so. Like, follow, comment. Until next time. Goodbye.